My name is James Bezik. I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. This series is about the S3 to Lambda serverless design pattern and how it can become a flexible core for your serverless applications. In this video, I'll show you how you can load large amounts of data into your DynamoDB tables by staging it in S3 first and then uploading with Lambda. Amazon DynamoDB is a fast web scale NoSQL database that is central to many serverless applications. With its on-demand capacity feature, it can ingest enormous amounts of data without you needing to manage shards or scale up a fleet of servers. By connecting S3 to Lambda to DynamoDB, we're using three highly scalable services. Let's see how we can use this in combination to load data in parallel. So the first thing we're going to do is git clone the repo, the S3 to Lambda repo. And we can see there there's the third example, DynamoDB. I'll just cd into that directory. And in there, there's a SAM template, template.yaml. I'm going to deploy this SAM template using SAM deploy using the new guided deploy method. For a stack name, I'm going to use jbezword dynamodb. We're working in US West 2. The input bucket name will be jbezword dynamodb. And then I'll just accept the defaults in the deployment. And that's now being deployed. So let's look at the template. First, there's an input bucket name at the top with a default. And then in the resources section, there is the S3 bucket using that parameter. There's a DynamoDB table configured using the on-demand billing. And then finally, we have the import function itself. With the code in the import function folder, it's a Node.js application using 512 megs of RAM. And those are the IAM policies that give access to the table and the bucket. And it will respond to JSON files when they arrive in this bucket. So let's take a look at the code behind this. In the import function directory, there's an app.js file. Now this is a standard Lambda handler passing in an event that could contain multiple files. So what this does is it iterates through the list of all of those and it gets the text from each object in the incoming event. And it's going to parse that JSON and then upload it into DynamoDB using this function. Now that function down there, it actually batches the contents of that file into 25 at a time. And then it stores those into DynamoDB. So this is just a mechanism for batching up the contents of the JSON, checking, make sure that all the attributes are there. And then we, we use a random ID in this case, but you don't need to necessarily do that. And then it calls batch write of the doc write client. OK, so the deployment has now finished. So let's take a look at how this works. So in DynamoDB, we can see we now have a new table as part of our deployment. And currently, there's nothing in there. Back in S3, I'll just refresh so we can see our new bucket. And this is currently an empty bucket. I'm going to upload a JSON file. I'll start with a smaller one. It's just a list of locations of a popular coffee chain. I'm going to upload this file now. That's now been uploaded. If I go back to DynamoDB and refresh, you can see there's 36 items now in the table. That's the small list of locations. And those are all the different items that have been stored and extracted from the file. Now, the next thing I can do is I've got a larger list of, of locations. It has a list of every single Starbucks in the whole of the US, which I found on GitHub. So I'm going to use this larger list of examples to show you how fast this can run. So let's take a look at this locations.json file, the larger version. As you can see, this file contains, well, nearly 60,000 different lines in the JSON file. So let's upload that. I'll go back to the S3 bucket and upload. We'll just pull that in and upload this file. 
Okay, so that's now that's now uploaded successfully. So back in the DynamoDB table, if I refresh, what you can see is now we have hundreds and hundreds of items that have appeared. And in fact, this file has something along the lines of 8,000 different locations. These have all now been loaded to our table. And there's some more of them. So now I can upload multiple of these at once. You don't need to do this one at a time, so I'll just add files. And I'll put both of these, along with some other JSON files I have, back into this bucket. Those are all uploaded. And again, you can see that the table is just ingesting these lists of items uh, very easily. So you could potentially upload dozens or hundreds of different files this way just by dropping them into your bucket. Let's take a quick look at the Lambda function that is doing the work. This is the importer function that was deployed as part of our SAM deployment. Let's take a look at the monitoring tab and then see the logs in CloudWatch. I'll just pick one of these log streams. There's one for every file that we uploaded. I'll open up the top one. And there you can see it just pulling in all of the contents and then batching out the results using that batch write operation to DynamoDB. Here, the S3 to Lambda pattern can be used to load data into a DynamoDB table directly from objects stored in an S3 bucket. Whether you have a handful of very large files or thousands of smaller ones, this approach loads the data quickly and reliably. With DynamoDB on-demand provisioning, you no longer have to manage write units with your table since this is handled by the service. All of this happens without needing to manage any servers, and when the traffic slows down, the services scale down automatically so this is a perfect solution for use cases with spiky traffic. The Lambda function contains only the minimal business logic to connect the services, just over 100 lines of code in this case. This function extracts the data from JSON files, but you could easily modify the code to work with CSV or any performat you prefer. Using the serverless application model, setting up a deployment package with the AWS resources in our code is also very easy. To download the examples from this video and deploy the application in your own account, visit this URL. Thanks for joining me for this walkthrough. Don't miss the other videos in this series that show other ways to use S3 to Lambda for your serverless applications. Happy coding!